Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week and we are in the last week of the month of November. We have just a few days to the end of this month and then we'll be entering the last month of the Gregorian calendar, which is December. Now, I don't know what's been in your heart this year. Sometimes as we approach the end of the year, a lot of people start asking themselves questions. And let me tell you one truth so you help yourself. All you need to find out is what are the things the Lord commanded you to do this year if you heard him. If you heard him and you have not done them, then you know you are in disobedience and you need to repent and ask the Spirit of God to help you. If you didn't hear the Lord, then it means your life is not consciously in God's will. I use the word consciously because I didn't say you're not in God's will. But you're like one who the wind is just tossing to and fro. There's one thing about being a man of the spirit, like Jesus said, whom as the wind blows, you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. So shall show is everyone who's born of the spirit. So when I made that statement, I said, you're just one that is being tossed to and fro, you know, by the wind. Jesus did not say the one who's born of the spirit is tossed to and fro by the wind. Say he is like the wind. It is you that think the wind is just showing up. The wind has a purpose. The wind has knows where it is going. It just means you cannot predict it. That's all Jesus was talking about. But you don't want to live your life as one who's just being tossed to and fro by the wind, not by the spirit now, but by the wind. Praise God. Now, I have a lot I'm going to be sharing with you today, but before we do that, can we call for that daily bread in obedience to what Jesus had commanded us? Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we've been talking all month about believing in Jesus. And we've been taking our, our text from Mark chapter 16 and from verse 17. You know, well, we started from verse 14, but the main focus is from verse 17. And Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe see the word of god or the scriptures is there as a guide to us i always you've heard me say this many times everything written in scriptures is true meaning when i mean it's true i mean there is no fake story there there is no fake instructions there every instruction you see in scripture was actually given every story you read in scripture was actually happened there is no make-up story, no make-believe story. See, so when you, that's why we believe the Bible. We know, now some people think the Bible is the power of God. No, the Bible is not the power of God. Just like you've heard me say that the Bible is not the word of God. But you see, the power of God is revealed in the Bible. See that now? The power of God is revealed in the Bible. How is it revealed in the Bible? The things that are written in the Bible, they tell us how powerful our God is. So when you believe the Bible, you're saying, I believe those things that are written about God in the Bible. But then it's wrong for you to think because I have read the Bible, I am now fine. Just like some people think because I've read the scriptures, I can now sleep well. Now, yes, the scripture has the ability to make you wise. How does it make you wise? By the informations you take in. See, when you take in those informations and meditate on them and begin to shape in your mind by that understanding, you will become wise. But not just when you read it like a novel and like, mm, I have, how many verses did I read today? I read five. Oh, wow. Thank God I will sleep well this night. Okay, what did you read in those five verses? And I just know I read Matthew chapter. I think I read Matthew chapter. So what did you read? 
Uh, well, I can't really remember, but I, I really read it. Too. I really read it. Too. No. So in your mind, just like some people put the Bible under their pillow and think because this book is under my pillow, no demon can come near me. No, you lie. Praise <laughs> God. You lie because now that kind of belief is harmful to your spiritual health. Because you see, one day the devil is going to attack you. And here's what you begin to think. Maybe the power of God is not so strong after all that he cannot stop the devil from coming to me. No, you simply did not engage the power of God. That's what happened to you. It's not about the Bible not being powerful. You did not know or engage the power of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now then, so we, we've been talking about believing in Jesus. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And it says, And these signs, all King James say, shall follow those who believe. Now then, I was fellowshipping with the Lord and meditating on this. Now, when you see me teach something for this long, don't think, I don't know what to say. It's, you need to understand that I myself have been feasting. Only now imagine, imagine this, how many verses now? Two verses. I've been feasting on it for this whole month. So, well, I mean, I don't understand. Is that you don't understand English that you can understand? No. You see, that's the problem. You think, I've read it, I've read it. So what is there again? No. Someone else is looking at this and like, sorry, Lord, why, why did you say this? Why did you say this? Now, in that engagement and meditation, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus said, will guide us into all truth, began to open my eyes. And then he began to make me see, I have been a preacher for many years, but he began, I've preached this scripture for many years. But then he began to open something to my eyes. I was like, what? And I just felt, oh, I still feel, this is the biggest instruction Jesus gave. And then we play light of it. I'm telling you how I feel. This is what every preacher should be preaching. Because now, I was, I was looking at this and then the Lord began to minister something to me, very profound. And I, and I, and I pray you understand this. He said to me, he said, do you know Jesus didn't give this instruction haphazardly. Now this, understand, this is the last instruction Jesus was giving to his disciples before he left. Now Mark told us that he, he came to meet the 11 of them. See, they had come together and then now Jesus is giving them the final instructions before leaving. And Mark told us the level of them were gathered. So meaning he's going to speak to them heart to heart. And so now he gave them this instruction. He said, go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. And anyone who doesn't believe shall be damned. Now we've dealt with that previously. I said the baptism Jesus referred to was not water baptism. It was Holy Ghost baptism. We've dealt with, I think, last week or two weeks ago. You can check that out. Now, Jesus now said, the ones who don't believe will be condemned. So anyone who doesn't believe our gospel will be condemned for not believing our gospel. Why would they be condemned for not believing our gospel? They not be, them not believing in our gospel is proof that they do not have the capacity in them to receive or believe and receive our gospel. Now, not your gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because today, there are many gospels. And when people don't believe, you think they have not believed the gospel of Jesus. No, 
It is your gospel they did not believe. They have not heard it yet. They have not yet heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we, we, we must understand those things. First of all, we must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit does the work of baptizing those who believe. And Jesus now instructed them and said, These signs shall follow them that believe. So he was telling the preachers, the ones who send, he's sending out to go preach, that when you preach, watch out for these signs. Now, of course, if you're going to watch out for those signs, you must have those signs working in you. See that now? Because now these signs are actually the effect of the Holy Ghost baptism in a man's life. He, you are not going to preach if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be born again. If you are not being baptized by the Holy Ghost and then you go preach, you're a fake preacher. See that now? So Jesus instructing them. Now, this is the reason he also told them in the book of Acts that they should stay in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. See, he told them to wait until they themselves are baptized. Now, the moment they got baptized, things began to happen in their lives. So they had first-hand experience of what Jesus was sending them to go look out for in other people that they preached to. So now the Spirit of God was now telling me this. He said, look, every instruction Jesus gave here, he itemized them properly. So they weren't, they weren't just thrown haphazardly, you know, um, any of this sign. No, 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 no. I began to look at it again. Like, see, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truths. I pray you understand what the word guide is. He didn't say the Holy Spirit will tell you all truths. He said he will guide you into all truths. That means your mind's got to be working and then you, are, you must learn how to yield to his guidance. If you yield to his guidance and your mind is not working, you will not find any truth. If you yield to his guidance, your mind's got to be working. If your mind is overworking and there is no guidance, then you have a problem. And that's the truth. Praise God. So he says, And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. That's the first thing he said. They shall cast out devils. Now, I told you the old King James used the word shall. It's a very strong, powerful word. Shall. Meaning this must happen. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you've got to cast out devils. Why? Because they are the restricting force. They are the restricting beings to you fulfilling destiny in life. There is no born born of God who's not challenged or who's not been who's not who's even now not being challenged by demonic spirits or demonic forces. Now you don't need to do anything. Just be born. And there is a demon out there looking out for you and wondering who you are, how to stop you. If you don't believe this, like I told you before, it means you two have been trapped. We have an enemy out there. These demon spirits, they are our enemies. They, their job or their, their goal is to stop you from fulfilling God's agenda for your life. The reason is this. If we fulfill God's agenda for our lives, it means their judgment has come. And that's the truth. So because they don't want their judgment to come, they hinder us from fulfilling God's assignments. So the first thing you're going to deal with after the Holy Spirit has come upon you is to receive authority to cast out devils. Now, we cast out devils by authority. I let that sink in your heart. I've been saying this all month. We cast out devil by authority, not by our own strength, not by our own power. We cast out devils by authority now we have been given the authority to use the name of jesus now someone say how do you use the name of jesus is as simple as saying 
in the name of Jesus. Now, I was listening to someone one time, you know, trying to argue that when Jesus said in my name, he didn't mean in my in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, understand something. You know, sometimes people try to drive home a point. Now, see, when you when you try to drive home one point, um, don't be careless not to realize that that point you're trying to drive home might be connected to some other things you see that's why when when you hear something new don't just rush pause spend time with the holy spirit let him open to you the whole bundle of truth you know so so some people say oh he doesn't mean you have to say in jesus name hey you remember one time in scriptures Jesus was with his disciples, so his disciples came to meet him and said, Master, we saw someone casting out devils in your name, and we stopped him because he was not one of us. Now, what did they see? Think about it. What did they see that they came to report to Jesus that we saw someone casting out devils in your name? So that means they saw someone they didn't know Casting out devils using the name of Jesus. So they saw the person say, I command you or I adjourn you or whatever. In the name of Jesus, come out. Now you remember the seven sons of Sceva. They, they went um, to cast out devils and then they say, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out. So how did they use the name? By declaring or confessing that we are coming or doing this in this name. So when Jesus said, in my name, they would drive out demons. He meant in the name of Jesus, come out. Now that is how we deal with demonic spirits. But then, it's not everyone that uses the name that can back up what they do. I'll explain it simply this way. Someone can take the uniform of a police officer, right? Or a traffic warden. Uh, let me use a traffic warden. He wears the uniform. He, now, he's not a police officer. He didn't go for any training. He doesn't know how to speak their language, see? But he takes on that uniform. And do you know if he goes to the street and to the junction and begins to control traffic, they will obey him. You know that, right? They will obey him because he's carrying the emblem of that authority. But then something may happen that he is opposed. Now, when he is opposed, he wouldn't know what to do. Now, that's when it will be revealed that this one does not have or have not been given the authority to use this uniform. And guess what happens to him? Oh, you know the story, just like the seven sons of Sceva. They dealt with them. Those demon spirits dealt with them. But here is it, and you need to understand this. By the authority that we have been given, every demon knows that not obeying will be their doom. We have been given the authority to use the name of Jesus. Now, as long as you have received that authority, and where do you receive it from? Not from a pastor. See, there was a time Jesus gave his disciples power to cast out devils. And they went and came back and said, look, every demon we met answered us when we mentioned your name. See? Now, that's the one Jesus personally gave to them for that purpose. But Jesus was now telling them that, hey, the Holy Spirit, when he baptized you, will give you the authority. So now... You have, it's like you have gone through the training. Now you have been handed over the emblem of this authority to use it at will. You understand that? So when we cast out devils, we cast them out with the authority of Jesus. This has nothing to do whether you are strong or whether you are weak, whether you have fasted, whether you have prayed. No, sir. 
Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus said, uh, there are some demons that does not come out except by fasting and prayer. I'll, I'm going to show you that tomorrow. Praise God, because my time is up. Let, let's, I'm going to show you what Jesus meant in that one. So don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. And let me tell you this truth. Never be afraid of any demon. Never be afraid of devils. You've been given authority to cast them out. So do what? Do exactly what the authority is for. Cast them out. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.